When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Yes, it's true. You might have a love-hate relationship with credit cards. But what if those points unlock a world of experience for you? Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Hey, it's Shauna here with some really exciting news. You can now listen to our entire back catalog completely ad-free, exclusively on Stitcher Premium. Check out all your favorite episodes of Millennial Money, like how to finally master the art of budgeting. In addition to the Millennial Money archive, you can also listen to every new episode ad-free, as well as tons of other ad-free Wondery shows with hundreds of hours of original content, audio documentaries, and exclusive bonus episodes from some of your favorite podcasts. You can sign up now for a free month of Stitcher Premium by going to stitcherpremium.com slash Wondery and using the promo code Wondery. Then once you're signed up, you just download the Stitcher app for iOS or Android and start listening. That's stitcherpremium.com slash Wondery in promo code Wondery. There may be seven documented wonders of the world, but I argue that credit card points are pretty much the eighth wonder. That is at least in my world. And that might seem like a very strange statement for me to make, considering total revolving credit card debt in the United States of America stands at $1.04 trillion, and that's up from $857 billion in 2013. So obviously, we like our credit cards. We're charging lots of things, and then we're just not paying them off. And the average credit card interest rate is 16.46%, which I think is probably actually pretty low. If you look at most of your credit cards, I would imagine you'd say interest rates somewhere in the 20 percentile mark. Maybe if you have superior, awesome, out of this world credit, maybe you average lower than 16%. But I think that's a pretty fair average. And how many times have you tried to pay off your debt And then nothing seems to be happening. Maybe even it feels like it's 
growing. Like it's this three headed monster that is staring you down each month. And then there are all those reasons why we have debt. We get frustrated and stressed out and we go buy something. That is a human emotion, a human reaction. And we don't worry about it because we'll just charge it and then we'll worry about it later, which of course keeps this whole cycle of debt growing and building and and gets, gets us more stressed out and frustrated. So it's kind of ironic that the thing that we were doing to relieve the stress and pressure is actually the thing that's putting more stress and pressure on us. Kind of makes you go, hmm, right? (laughs) Or there are those months when the numbers, they just don't add up and you have no choice but to put some of the expenses every month on your credit card. Or what about that day that comes when you're driving to work, you get a flat tire, and then you realize you're actually going to need four new tires. I mean, who has an extra $900 to set aside to pay for that? It's crazy, but there are so many reasons why credit card debt is on the rise. And I understand them all. I've experienced them all myself. I've been in and out of credit card debt various times in my life. Some of the reasons were, well, okay, I'm going to take that back. All the reasons were my doing, whether it was situational based or just because I went out and bought a bunch of stuff that I couldn't afford. But life is expensive. And I think the desire to buy stuff, it's just in our face all day long, every day. And I really feel like it's only getting worse. I don't know. What do you think about this? I mean, I probably open up Instagram and social media. I can pretty much stay off Facebook. That one really doesn't grab me anymore. But there's something about Instagram where I can just sit and I just scroll, just kind of endlessly scroll all or watch stories. And then Before I even know it, I'm sort of down this like train wreck of emotions where suddenly I'm not feeling good about myself or I'm comparing myself to somebody else or I'm thinking like, oh, I need to buy that or I need to buy that outfit or I need to do whatever that person is doing. And then without even thinking, I'm on the internet and I'm I'm researching or I'm looking up or I'm trying to find the outfit or something. And it for me, there has to be a moment where I go, okay. Let's wheel this back in and let's think about the reality. Okay, if we spend $300 here, am I going to be able to do the other things that I need to do throughout the month? So for me, it's just been a it's been a process, but I get sucked down the drain pipe just like everybody else because I don't know how, I mean, I guess you could avoid everything, but I think that's pretty hard to do. But one of the biggest reason is we're just spending more than we have each month and cutting back it's a habit that has to be cultivated and we don't like habits. We don't like to be told that we're doing something wrong or we don't really want to put in the effort to, to change things. Hopefully, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> you're somebody who's motivated to at least dip your toe in the water of change and see if maybe you can change your mindset around money or maybe there's something better you can do with your money or just to get different ideas, whatever it may be. But I would like to think that if you're here listening, you're sort of mildly, moderately enthusiastic about cultivating a habit of change. But if not, maybe you're just here listening and I'm hoping that like secretly um, some way I'm going to just like feed into your brain and then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, oh my God, today is the best day ever and I'm totally motivated to change things with my money. Hey, may happen, may never happen, but you know. (laughs) I can just put that out there. But this episode, it's not about credit card debt. As as much as I know that is a huge pain point and it may be a pain point for you. Like I said, it's been a pain point for me numerous times in my life, but I've really done a lot of hard work, especially over the last couple of years to think differently about my credit cards, about my approach, about debt, about paying off debt. Uh, and and all of those sorts of things. So, you know, I want to infuse all of those in, in the episodes, but I want to talk about a topic that we haven't talked about a lot, uh, or certainly not in a whole episode. And credit card debt, it's, it's obviously a super important topic, but I want to talk about how you can reap all the benefits from credit cards while telling the credit card companies basically to shove it when it comes to debt and high interest rates. And I feel like that is the... Ah, like such the sweet spot. If you can get to that point, and like I said, it took me many, many years to be able to to figure this out and to be able to figure out, like, oh, I can actually 
win at the game of credit card points and I don't have to pay all the nasty interest. In fact, I don't even necessarily care what the interest rate is with a credit card (laughs) because it's sort of irrelevant if I'm using my credit cards effectively. And I thought, God, like, what if we could have this this ripple effect where people change their thinking about credit cards? And I know that it starts from reversing from there. So the reverse from there, obviously, is that you have to be in your money every day, every week, every month. And this doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process or something that creates more stress in your life. But you got to have some sort of boundaries, some sort of guidelines around your spending so that you can do all of those fun, cool things that you want to do in life. And sometimes that means like this month, I'm just not going to be able to do that, that I'm going to have to wait till next month because I know I'm going to have more cash flow next month, whatever it may be for your situation. But most of us don't like to play in that pool. (laughs) We don't like to play in the pool of, all right, if I'm better at managing what I've got without the crazy assumption that I have to somehow double my income or go rob a bank or win the lottery or something like that. But if I'm just focused in on what I've got and I use what I got the best way possible, then I can incorporate in credit card strategy and I can start to begin to win the war, if you will, against credit cards. But like I said, it, it's it's just a process. So wherever you are in that process, just kind of lean into it and think about today. What's what's one thing you can do today to better that, that situation for yourself? But again, we're not going in a long drawn out thing about that side of credit cards. We're talking about reaping the benefits. And every credit card has what are so-called earn rates and what are so-called burn rates. So if we think about the earn rates, it's just how you're going to collect, uh, gather up all the points on a particular credit card that then you can burn. So the burn rates determine what those rewards are, are worth, how you can use those particular rewards. And each card will have its plus and minuses. And the art of this is figuring out what is going to work best for your situation. And that really goes to, okay, what are your goals? Looking at what are your goals? Are your goals to travel? Are your goals that you just want to use credit card points to get a lot of cash back that then you're going to use maybe towards investing? Or maybe you're going to use the cash back towards charity. I don't know, whatever it is for you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be one particular reason or not, but you have to figure out first What are those things that are important to you? And then it's the process of figuring out, okay, do the credit cards I have or the credit cards that I'm going to get, how do they align with those particular goals? And also be willing to maybe let go of some that don't match up. And I'm not a huge fan of canceling credit cards because when you cancel a credit card, you basically shrink this really important ratio between the amount of credit available you have and the amount of credit you used. And when you shrink that ratio, you run the risk of lowering your credit score. So I'm not a big fan of just going around and canceling all of your credit cards. In fact, what I tell most people is just grab some scissors, cut up the card, put it in an envelope or something like that. Just get it out of your sight. But don't go around just closing everything because you get so freaking frustrated with your credit cards. Probably not a good idea for your credit score because as we've talked about on credit score episodes, the higher your score is, the more you fall when quote unquote negative things happen to your credit. And so it's super easy to think that you're doing this really great thing by closing out a lot of credit cards to take away the temptation and suddenly your credit score drops 100 points and then you need to go out and buy a new car or you're trying to buy a house And suddenly you're looking at a much larger interest rate than if you would have just left that card open. So it has all of these different ramifications. So again, just take a breath before you make any dramatic moves when it comes to your finances in that way. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news 
Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. Okay, so let's talk about what you can actually do with your credit card points. So, wow, there are so many amazing things. And you may know about all of these. Hopefully, there's a few that might be a little bit of a surprise to you. But I can remember, uh, I was in my early 20s. I must have been 25 or 26. And I made a pretty stupid... (laughs) It's not stupid. I don't, I don't, there are no decisions that are stupid. So I'm going to erase that word from my vocabulary. But I went to one of those sort of timeshare spiels. And let me tell you, I walked in the room and this person hit a button and this whole map just lit up. Like there were dots everywhere around the world. And he was like, all right, which of these dots, where do you want to go? Where do you want to travel? And at 25 and still now, I want to go absolutely everywhere in the world. So my eyes got like as big as saucers and I just kind of looked at him and I know he knew that I was gone at that point in time. So I ended up buying a timeshare, which is can be a smart money decision, but most of the time, probably not a good use of your cash (laughs) for lots of various reasons. But anyway, so I ended up doing it. And uh, part of the package was that I got a particular credit card with Starwood, which was an American Express credit card. And you got just this ridiculous amount of points. And then there was this whole booklet that came with the timeshare that talked about the credit card and it talked about all the different ways that you could utilize the points to travel around the world. And I became like a junkie. I was researching all the all the ways I could use my points. And if you use a certain amount of points, you could book four nights and get the fifth night free and just 
all sorts of things. And then I became a real pro at how many points I could get on a certain card when I bought groceries or a certain card when I went to the gas station. So I knew all of those things ahead of time. And for me, it was a game of just supercharging as many points as I could possibly get. So my whole point is the first and one of the best reasons for credit card points is you can travel and you can travel, my friend, all around the world. You can use your points on hotels, on airfare, on car rental, so much more. I mean, one little trick that I found is a lot of times the points aren't as beneficial if you're trying to book like a, let's say, five or five star plus hotel. It takes a lot of points to do that. But if you're trying to book like a mid-range hotel, usually you can really stretch the points out and get some amazing benefit. You can also use them to buy gift cards, like hello holidays. (laughs) My motto is why spend more money when you can use your points to buy gift cards and then just give them to your friends and family. They don't have to know that they were from your points. It's still the same thing. If I'm going to give you, if I'm going to give you a gap gift card, I would have either had to go to Gap to buy the gift card or I can just use my points, get the same gift card and give you the Gap gift card. And you're super excited, especially hopefully if you love the Gap. And I'm really excited because I didn't have to spend any more money on that particular gift card. It's it's just amazing. <laughs> you can use the points towards merchandise. For instance, I can transfer my uh, Chase Sapphire preferred points to Amazon, which I shop... <laughs> I can't even, I don't, I don't even, I shudder to tell you how much I, we spend on Amazon every year. It's a, it's a lot of money. It really is. <laughs> but it's that free shipping, right? That free two-day shipping. God, I can't pass that up. Anyway, you can use them towards purchases. Some credit cards transfer to like Uber or Target or different things like that. Like all of these expenses that you have every month that you would normally just pay cash for, you can use your points. You can get cash back, which is a genius reason to have a credit card that gives you cash back. And uh, cash is great, right? If I'm going to hand you twenty dollars, I hope to God you're not going to you're not going to pass that up. You can also experience exclusive events. This is something that a lot of the credit card companies are really ramping up, and I've seen a lot of them do some really cool things, particularly in the past few years. So Chase is really good at offering like exclusive concerts and experiences that you can literally buy with your points, like backstage stuff, just intimate uh, concerts, lots of really, really cool things. You can also use your points in uh, credit cards loyalty programs. So a lot of the credit cards will have their own dedicated loyalty site where let's say you want to go on a trip and you book the flight or the hotel or whatever it may be through their loyalty site, they'll usually offer you some sort of bonus incentive. So you can get even more for your quote unquote money through their site, which is really cool. You can also donate your points to charity or just cash them in and then donate the cash to your favorite charity. I have a friend who is super passionate about uh, breast cancer awareness and breast cancer charities. And so her whole method or mode of using a certain credit card is that every year she cashes in the the points and she is able to write a fairly decent sized check to the charity. And it just makes her feel really good because she would love to donate to this charity regardless, but this is sort of a way to have your cake and eat it too, because she's using the credit card throughout the month for the expenses that she normally has. But then she's banking all this uh, cash back and all these points. Then she can just turn in, turn them into cash and donate that to the charity. So that that's seven magical, amazing ways to use your points. And I just say this is the same thing as ways to put money back in your pocket for things that you're already spending your money on. And that's something that if you just walk away with nothing else from this episode, it's it's that idea of utilizing something that's out there and stripping away the negative emotion that you might have towards it to be able to use it in a really smart way. I don't know if you've heard of someone called the Points Guy. He has a website and he's 
he's everywhere (laughs) in every article that talks about credit card points, but he was recently quoted as saying, you generally shouldn't redeem points and miles from merchandise, gift cards, or cash back. You'll get way more value by using your rewards for travel, either by booking flights or hotels directly. That aside, I also often say that the best way to use points is the one that makes you happy. And I think that's a great message. So even if you read a ton of articles and the articles say, don't ever turn in your points for cash back, but you're really passionate about getting cash back, that's what makes you super excited, super happy, then go for it. They're your points. You, you've done the hard work to build the points. Do whatever is going to, to make you feel happy. So this is really where the shift started to happen for me a few years ago. It's been way more than a few years. I would say 10 plus years, but the last few years I've definitely had a different strategy when it comes to credit cards and credit card points and debt and all sorts of goodies like that. But if I treated my card, my credit cards like a debit card and I just paid off my balance in full each month, and that's where the magic comes in because I can get all the benefits without having to worry about interest rates and debt. And it just changes the ball game for me. So how this works, this is literally my system. I run all my spending through one main credit card. The credit card that I figured out works best for my goals and where I can really, really get a lot of points. I mean, everything that I can put on a credit card in a month that I would normally spend my money on. This is not extra stuff. This is not me going out and buying crazy things. This is normal stuff. Then that's what I put on the card. And I make sure that I'm just staying on top of the expenses each week so I won't have any surprises. In fact, one of the best tips I have is pay off your credit card each week just so you make sure you're not over budget at the end of the month. There's absolutely no rule that says you have to make one payment to your credit card. But by doing this, we have reached so many amazing rewards. Last year, we flew three times on our points for free and got a five-night hotel stay. We used points for gift cards, the holidays, and then only spent about $100 out of pocket for other gifts. And we used cash back to buy more podcasting gear. So there are lots of different ways that you can work this equation, again, depending on what what your situation looks like. And not all credit cards are created equal, sure. You'll want to figure out what's important to you, whether it's points or cash back. And you also want to look at all the ways you can redeem points with a credit card, what the interest rate is in case you get in a pinch, and know when and if your points expire. So a lot of credit card points don't actually expire, but there are some credit cards out there where they do expire. And so you just want to make sure you stay on top of that because the worst thing that can happen is you build up a lot of points and then one day they're just vanished because you haven't used them. So don't become like a points hoarder. Make sure that you're using them fairly frequently uh, just so you make sure that you, you take advantage of them. Plus, credit cards, they help you build your credit score. So the common myth is that debit cards help you build your score because they've got the little Visa or MasterCard on the card, but they don't. They're just attached to your bank account. So they're not doing anything other than just moving money in and out of your bank account. That is it. So really, if you can trick yourself into the mindset of just paying off your credit card just like a debit card, in my opinion, it's a great, smart money move. Why? Because you're leveraging money you'd already be spending, but in such a smarter way to get loads and loads of benefits. So maybe for you, you have to reverse a little. You have to deconstruct what is happening, why you're turning to your credit cards, why your debt is getting bigger and bigger. Start there, figure out what that reason is and figure out that there's some way that you can find some easy fixes around that. Maybe it's just you have to be more intentional with the amount of money you're spending. Maybe, I I don't know, maybe you're just getting in pinches every month. Whatever it is, just sort of unravel. Maybe you're just, it's your stress reliever. Well, let's find a better stress reliever for you, like yoga or taking a walk or something refreshing like that. And then that way you can really use your credit cards for points because the worst thing that happens is if you have a points credit card and you have debt on that credit card, it's really hard for you to 
get all the benefits, meaning the points and the cash back and things like that. So those cards are the best when they have a zero balance and then every month you're just kind of starting new. So hopefully this has given you just a little incentive to work, work, work your credit card points and turn them into cash, cash that you are not having to come up with. This is a great way to stretch your budget to find more money in your bank account. It's just to be smart with what you already have. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. 